thanks so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here this morning. Um, it's well, it's morning where I am anyway. So thank you for having me here to talk about community. It is one of the things that I am most excited to talk about because I find myself in it all the time in different ways and different places. And so today we're going to talk about whether or not you do need a community and, um, spoiler alert, the answer is yes, but I think it's about like finding the right community for you. So we're going to talk about that. Um, before we get into it, I'll just tell you a little bit more about myself. So as Darren said, I am a technical community builder at DeepGram, and I also am a, the creator and one of the maintainers at Virtual Coffee. Um, prior to my tech career, I spent 10 years teaching college English. Before that, I was a community organizer for a year. And I moved over to tech a couple of years ago. I went to a boot camp, so I have a non traditional background. And then at the uh, initial uh, shutdown with COVID, I lost my job. That was my first developer job. I had been in it about eight months. And I, it was really tough because I have four kids and school was shut down. So I was interviewing really for the first time ever because my contract work was just a great conversation that I had with someone and it felt like a good fit. Um, but now I was interviewing with my kids home, having to do work, teach them from home and uh, also try and live in this pandemic world. And so I, I found that um, my past, I'd come into tech after I'd gone through a major medical trauma. And I was having the same feelings that I did in those moments where I felt really lost, felt like um, kind of hopeless. I didn't know what was going on. And then that's when I said, hey, does anybody want to meet up for virtual coffee on Twitter? And when I did that, people did. And then I found that all of those things that I experienced from that trauma, the healing that I had been working through, it, it was found in the answer that we shouldn't be isolated. We should be together. And it was really hard to be together in a pandemic, but we found those paths online. And so from there, over the last two plus years, I've spent a lot of time doing community organizing online because that's how we help each other grow. That's how we grow ourselves. And, and that's how we find healing in a lot of the things that we're going through. So that's kind of my very short version of what brought me to this point and why I'm here today talking to you about community. But it is all to say that I think that community is an important part of our growth and where, where we go in our lives and careers. So now that we've kind of got those intros and you know where I'm from, I want to make sure that we're on the same page when we're talking about community because there's so many different definitions out there. I think that at its core, community is a group of people that have a connected sense of belonging. There might be an interest, a product, or a practice that ties them together. And I know this is pretty general, but we'll get more specific and talk about that. Um, there's another definition that I really like for community, and this is from Chris Brogan. He says, the difference between an audience and a community is which direction the chairs are pointing. In this sense, community is about developing relationships, engaging with people, being a part of something together. You're not talking at them, you're talking with them. And I really love that sense of connectedness and engagement and being a part of something together when we talk about community. Now, I also think that it's helpful to know what, what is not a community. This helps us to get further understanding here. It's not an audience. It's not people who just come to get their questions answered. It is a group that has some central focus, something that brings them back to work together. Um, and it's a group that interacts in some way. Now, I mentioned this before, but there are some different types of communities. And I think it's worth noting that this is an exhaustive list and that there's often overlap in these things. But as you're searching for a community, it's useful to know what kind of communities there are out there. So uh, the first one, product community, that 
is obviously focused on a particular product. So that might be like Nike or Salesforce or Atlassian um, or some other product that people are interested in using or use frequently. Another type of community is a community of interest. This is where you're interested in the same subject matter. So you might all be interested in a certain television show, a hobby, something that you consume and other people do as well. And the last one is a community of practice. This is where you have shared interests, passions, or concern. This one's a little bit more action-oriented. So you can see there's some overlap with a community of interest. You're interested in these things, but what are you doing to solve a problem or to learn together? This is where there's um, an action that's driving that community. So as you explore the type of communities that are useful to you, there's a couple of things that you can ask yourself. Uh, what do you enjoy doing that you'd like to share with others? What do you feel like is missing in your life right now? Maybe you're learning to code and you'd really like to have a study group help with accountability, co-learning experiences, get some support. This is another great place to start. Um, you also might think of like, what do you have that you can offer to others? So maybe you're a career changer too. Maybe your background was in marketing, but you're coming into tech. So maybe you want to talk with other marketers about the unique approach that you bring to tech, about those transferable skills from your last career to this career. Finding a community that's willing to talk about those things or that's already talking about those things can be a great way to discover what, what works for you.